Welcome to Clinical Minute, encouraging HPV vaccination for a young adult male. Day is a 22-year-old male who presents to your health clinic. He states that the primary reason for his visit is for a sexually transmitted infection, STI, test because he was told that a recent sex partner had syphilis. Although he is not in any obvious acute distress, he does seem somewhat anxious about this visit. Day has lived in the United States since he was 10 years old. He completed two years of college and then dropped out for financial reasons. He shares an apartment with a roommate and works two jobs, one as a waiter and one as an assistant in a graphics design firm. Day does not present with any specific symptoms. His past medical history is not remarkable for any major illnesses. Because Day has presented with an issue related to an STI, taking a full history, including a sexual history, is indicated for a proper assessment. You ask Day if he would be willing to answer some questions about his sexual health and history, and he says, that's fine. Your questions today include whether he has been sexually active in the last year, whether he has sex with men, women, or both, and how many sexual partners he has had in the past year. Day shares that he has been sexually active since age 19 and has sex only with men. He says that he can remember having sex with eight males over the last few years. He states that his most recent sex partner, who he has been with for a couple of months, informed him one week ago that he is positive for syphilis. He adds, I wasn't really sure about that disease, so I looked some things up about it, and I'm really worried about whether I will get it too. Although Day is clearly concerned about his risk for syphilis, are there other things you should be concerned about with respect to this exposure? Realizing that genital human papillomavirus HPV infection is one of the prominent STIs in young men, you inquire about Day's immunization history and ask specifically about whether he has had the HPV vaccine. He says he is not sure whether he has had the HPV vaccine. Each year, approximately 3 to 4 million cases of genital warts occur in men and the prevalence of genital HPV infection is 45% among men aged 18 to 59 years in the U.S. As a sexually transmitted infection, HPV occurs in both heterosexual men and men who have sex with men, or MSM. However, the prevalence of anal HPV infection in MSM is higher than that observed in heterosexual men. In addition, while the prevalence of high-risk or oncogenic HPV is 26 to 73 percent in HIV-negative MSM, the prevalence of oncogenic HPV in HIV-positive MSM is considerably higher, up to 93 percent. Anal, penile, and oral cancers are the predominant HPV-related cancers in men and occur in both MSM and non-MSM. Men who are immunocompromised and those who receive anal sex are more likely to develop HPV-related cancers. Although lower rates of HPV-associated cancers occur in Asians, you recognize that they should be immunized against HPV, especially since his risk for this disease is increased by having sex with men. The Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices, ACIP, recommends that routine HPV vaccination be initiated at age 11 or 12 years. The vaccination series can be started beginning at age 9 years. Older males through age 21 years should be vaccinated if they were not vaccinated when younger. Males non-MSM aged 22 through 26 years may be vaccinated, and HPV vaccination is recommended through age 26 years for MSM and for immunocompromised persons, including those who are HIV positive. The optimal time for an individual to get vaccinated is before they have been exposed to HPV. However, one can still get vaccinated if they have had prior sexual contact because they might not have been exposed to all types of HPV yet. According to a report by the National Cancer Institute, HPV vaccination of men aged 16 to 26 years 
who have sex with men in the year before vaccination reduces the risk for anal intraepithelial neoplasia, AIN, a precursor lesion of anal cancer. For persons initiating vaccination before their 15th birthday, the recommended immunization schedule is two doses of HPV vaccine. The second dose should be administered 6 to 12 months after the first dose. Zero, 6 to 12 month schedule. In a two dose schedule of HPV vaccine, the minimum interval between the first and second doses is five months. For persons initiating vaccination on or after their 15th birthday, the recommended immunization schedule is three doses of HPV vaccine. The second dose should be administered one to two months after the first dose, zero, one to two, six month schedule. In a three dose schedule of HPV vaccine, the minimum intervals are four weeks between the first and second doses, 12 weeks between the second and third doses, and five months between the first and third doses. Presently, there is no routine FDA approved test for detecting HPV in men and no nationally accepted guidelines to address screening men for HPV. Furthermore, routine testing or screening for HPV or HPV-related disease before there are signs or symptoms is not recommended by the CDC for anal, penile, or throat cancers in men in the U.S. You discuss the timing and process of HPV vaccination with Day and ask if he is willing to receive the vaccine and he agrees to do so. You continue with Day's medical and sexual history, asking him if he has ever been tested for HIV. You notice that he has a worried expression, and he states, I've never been tested, even though I know some of my friends have been tested. You ask Day if he might have reason to be concerned about his HIV status, and he responds, I wasn't so worried about being HIV positive until I found out that a recent partner was positive for syphilis. Then I got really worried about getting syphilis from him and whether he is HIV positive. You ask Day if he would like to be tested for HIV infection, and at first he is reluctant, but then says, I guess I'd better get tested and get it over with. The incidence of HPV infections and associated cancers is increased among persons who are HIV positive compared with the general population. In a prospective open-label study, the four-valent HPV vaccine was evaluated in HIV-positive antiretroviral therapy-treated young adults aged 13 to 27 years versus HIV-negative controls. Both HIV-positive and HIV-negative participants demonstrated strong HPV-specific immunity. Moreover, antibody responses against HPV vaccine types lasted 18 months among HIV-positive and HIV-negative participants. In a recent randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled trial that assessed the safety and immunogenicity of the four-valent HPV vaccine, in 162 Spanish MSM, there were significantly higher anti-HPV antibody titers in vaccinated individuals than in unvaccinated controls. You examine Day for genital warts and any obvious signs of an STI. Because of his recent exposure to a partner with syphilis, you advise him that he should be treated for that infection today. After ordering the HPV vaccine plus an HIV and other STI tests for day, you query him about safe sex practices. He responds, I try to practice safe sex, even though some others don't take it that seriously. You commend him for his commitment to practicing safe sex and provide a fact sheet on safe sex practices and STI prevention for MSM. You advise Day that the results of his STI tests will be back in a couple of days and he can expect a phone call from the clinic by the end of the week with his results.